morning, everybody. My name is Jack Dangerman. I'm very pleased to welcome you here. Those were the words, those were the voices of previous keynote speakers at this conference. And I hope you heard in their voice and in their words that they care very much about GIS and your work. I'm very pleased to welcome all of you here on behalf of all of my colleagues to this 30 seventh annual conference, <laughs> I have to remember. Um, the purpose of this meeting is to just be together. It's very simple, actually, to be together, to share what you do, to learn from each other, to grow, to advance the business, the process of GIS. This involves sharing honestly your real experiences. It means listening to what other people have to say. It means being with each other. And you are a very special audience. You have come from 130 different countries, actually, with different interests and different backgrounds and different professional backgrounds and different cultures behind you, different uh, academic disciplines. You actually cover the whole map in terms of virtually everything that everyone does on the planet. And I like to have this meeting start out by having you stand up and meet one person and get to know them a little bit, not too long, but just a moment, <laughs> so that you can get a sense of who you're around. Could you do that for me now, please? meeting each other, that is exactly what I want to have happen all week long. Because it's such a powerful experience when somebody shares their work, real experienced work, getting to know each other. And that's what we are up to, is building a vibrant and interesting community, bringing together all of you as individuals. More about that later. Your work is so interesting. The last month or so, I've been going through thousands of examples, going deep in some cases, looking at your maps. And by the way, I want to acknowledge you for, I want to acknowledge you deeply for sending me all of your maps. And I've pulled a few of them out of this, but before I get into that, I want to tell you that you are working on virtually all the, all the significant challenges and issues on the planet, from climate change to food production, to humanitarian relief, to making cities better. So let's just start with environmental monitoring. Some of you are working at a global scale, looking at environmental change, climate change, and also things like drought monitoring. This little handheld device is about using Survey123 to collect data on desertification going on in Turkey. And some of you are modeling things like noise pollution in cities, and just on and on and on. Energy development, looking for the best locations for renewable energy and monitoring it, looking at precision agriculture, agricultural production, increasing production, looking at managing and stewarding with great stewardship our forests. Others of you are managing the land cadaster, parcels, who owns what, the foundation for the civil society, and making interesting story maps from them, stories about parcel values or tax assessment, but also stories, for example, showing that setting up historic districts increases the value of property. Isn't that interesting? Storytelling. It starts by thinking. Some of you are working on creating new cities or redeveloping cities, applying the concepts of great urban design to create a better future. Regional planning, green infrastructure planning, understanding the corridors of wildlife, and on and on and on. Others are planning transit systems, public transit systems, walk and public transit systems, 
studying what makes cities livable, and looking at real-time traffic. But I'm very fond of the two in the bottom. One of them is by UPS. Last year, UPS saved $400 million. <laughs> of course, that might get your interest. By using a GIS to route and make their trucks go more efficiently. Well, that's really interesting because it's not just money, it's also less air pollution, less traffic, less energy use. And the post office is doing exactly the same thing. And then there's that little map about, about parking, real time parking availability. I always want that map. <laughs> I'm getting around, don't you?、Uh, down there in Alabama. And then this beautiful rendering of a proposed, proposed bridge in Alabama using City Engine. GIS is beginning to support increasingly engineering, dealing with engineering record keeping and engineering design and asset management. But I like this map in the center that shows the relationship between the natural drainage network. And the culverts that pull the natural drainage off. It's a beautiful and interesting map indeed. In the utility space and telecommunications, some of your work is enabling not only asset management, but taking GIS in new dimensions, supporting smart networks and smart meters. And the whole Internet of Things is becoming alive, feeding, feeding our GISs. And Here I'm fond of the map in the upper left, which is showing 4G coverage in San Francisco of buildings. And speaking about buildings, GIS is increasingly being used to manage interiors of buildings and groupings of buildings, supporting interior space planning and evacuation routing in buildings, using the same very principles that we apply to larger, smaller scales of geography. And in the commercial sector, wow, from where I sit, it's just coming alive finally. I mean, I studied this kind of stuff a long time ago <laughs> in regional economics. Walter Isard, he talked about finding the right location, and that's happening in Russia, it's happening in Poland, it's happening in Japan, it's happening in Brazil, picking the right spot. The most optimum conditions, becoming more efficient. And the president of SAP, shown here, is managing his business, his sales, his sales territories, now enabled by GIS. And then insurance, you'll see not only on this map, but other examples during the day, risk assessment, knowing where hail is hitting in this particular case for the last 10 years. And on and on. In these important subjects like health and education, your work is showing distinction, like distinction of income inequality and the disparity between school access and various populations, showing school performance, helping us cite the best location for hospitals or healthcare facilities, and showing performance measurement of them. In the world of public safety, Your work is making our communities safer, not only showing patterns of crime, but also space time analytics, space time hotspots that are able to tell the world, tell our communities what's going on and address them. Those viewshed maps are showing the vulnerability of areas, like in the London Marathon last year, and improvements everywhere. Making our communities safer. Just as underpinning the preparation for and responding to disasters, hurricanes, earthquakes, floods, wildfires, even predictions of landslides. But I'll also call your attention to the slides in the middle, supporting humanitarian response, supporting refugee camps, supporting it with maps telling us stories about where there's asylum. And supporting the food supply chains to these refugees. GIS is increasingly becoming understood as a platform for civic engagement, and users all over the world 
are opening up their data and sharing it on this platform from small cities to large metropolitan areas to whole states and whole governments and government agencies. Even the UN is using GIS as a way to bring together all the open data from all the various countries to address the global sustainability goals using a portal to organize it and tell the stories. Like most of you, I love maps. They tell stories. All of those pieces of work are, in some cases, heroic stories, and in some cases, scary stories. But these maps I just picked out because I liked them. <laughs> They're beautiful. Some people here in the room are mapping the poles and mapping the, the planets. Some of the best, beautiful maps in the world from Swiss topo, and then aeronautical charts, mapping the airspace and nautical charts, and the base map from Singapore. And of course, how could I resist? I'm a basketball fan, really. <laughs> and shot Steph Curry may not have won the NBA, but I don't know if his competition got this map or what it was, but anyway, I won't go there. <laughs> and even looking 10,000 years ago at what people sketched on the bones of horses, rendering them, giving us stories into the past. Well, most of you know that story maps are, what do you call it, trending. In the last year, over 100,000 story maps were published on the open web. And every day, there are tens of millions of views of these maps understanding our world. 